Have you ever heard about the law of intention? Have you ever, ever sat long enough to have the law of intention really explained so that you can understand its value in your life? Intention helps to bring your vision to pass. However, you cannot rely on intention alone. Did you know intention has a twin that guarantees that you will finish strong? Intention gets you started, but its twin helps you to finish. I want to give you the secret to finishing strong by revealing to you intention's twin. When you make up your mind to be intentional and to be consistent, you will not only start, but you will show up in life unapologetically successful, prosperous, and influential as the person that God designed you to be. And not to mention, you will show up unstoppable. So let's get started. Welcome to our next installment in our series entitled Intention, The Power of Intention. I'm jumping right into our text and into our teaching today because I want to take you on a journey. Proverbs 23, 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. You probably hear people saying, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you want to know what a person is thinking, just look at their life. And their life is a broadcast of their thought, the invisible realm of thought. In our last installment, I shared 20 out of 30 ways to succeed, prosper, and progress in life intentionally. And today I want to share the other 10 with you. So the first one in this uh, part of our series is use the 1% um, principle to succeed and to progress and prosper. And what I mean is you're going to do one thing a day towards bringing your vision to pass. You're going to do one thing a day towards living the life of your dream. If you're trying to lose weight, you're going to do one thing towards that every single day. And you want, if you're studying for a degree, you're going to do one thing to, towards that. You're going to do one thing towards preparing for a message, one thing towards clearing up your debt, one thing towards crafting, um, a place for, especially for yourself amongst the top 1% in your industry. And I promise you, if you would study your craft an hour a day within the next four years, you would be considered amongst the best, if not the best in your craft. That 1% uh, principle and strategy actually comes from Paul himself, the apostle Paul, when he said in Philippians 3, 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto to those things which are before me, I press. And so I was reading Alexander Hamilton, a quote that he said, all the genius I have, I have lies in this. When I have a subject at hand, I study it profoundly day and night. It is before me. I explore it in all of its bearings. My mind becomes pervaded with it. Then the effort which I have made is what people are pleased to call the fruit of genius. It is instead the fruit of labor and thought. It's intentional. One of the things that God said to Joshua, it's, it's amazing that actually shifted his life and changed the trajectory of his destiny. He said, listen, if you want success, if you want prosperity, do this one thing, Joshua, from out of the book of Joshua 1 and 8. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. It's the 1% principle. Ogmandino, one of my favorite authors, he said, it is those who concentrate on but one thing at a time who advances in this world. So many people are deceived into believing that this will take an incredible amount of effort, but it really doesn't, especially if you know how the 1% theory or principle of success and prosperity actually works. So let's think about it. One degree extra, it all is all it takes. So if you think about boiling water and steam, it's just one degree. And that one degree can change hot water, someone said, into steam. And with that, we can power a 
a locomotive and generate electricity. The average margin, if you think about it, for the last 25 years in any major golf tournament combined is less than three strokes. The margin for victory between an Olympic gold medal and no medal is just a fraction of an inch, a fraction of a mile, and a fraction of a point. It's not the whole point, it's not the whole mile, it's not the whole inch, but it's just a fraction of it. In 2005, which is quite some time ago, in the man's 800 meter race, the margin of victory was 0.71 seconds, not even a whole minute. So that 1% uh, principle works in the Indy, for instance, 500, the average margin for victory for the past 10 years has been just over one second, not even a minute. It's been 1.54 seconds. So that's not even a minute. It's, it's just over one second and under two seconds. The winner's average take home is 625,000, almost 700,000, just over half a million dollar. So in your life, when it comes to intentionality, if you would intentionally use the 1% principle in all areas of your life, whether it is to build wealth, whether it's to lose weight, whether it's to start a business, write a book, whatever you're involved in, use 1% principle. And I've discovered that sometimes it just takes you out of your comfort zone. But if you think about it, David had to be taken out of his comfort zone to fight Goliath. Esther had to be taken out of her com comfort zone in order to deliver her people from ethnic cleansing. Noah uh, had to be taken out of his comfort zone, defying the odds and the status quo to build the ark. Peter could never really walk on the water until he got out of his comfort zone. Moses never opened up the sea until he faced a Red Sea and it took him out of his comfort zone. So that 1% is putting enough tension on you that you are out of your comfort zone, that you are walking away from familiarity and, and comfort and the ordinary. And if you want to walk away from the clutter of the comfortable and the clutter of the ordinary, it just takes that 1%. Um, number two, learn how to ban reality. When we think of Stephen Jobs, they talked about him living in an alternative reality. But Joshua bent reality before anybody did. Um, you know, when I think about it, faith bans reality towards a specific vision. I was, I was born in abject poverty, grew up in abject poverty. But through faith, I bent reality towards success. I bent reality towards prosperity. I bent reality to, towards um, progress. And I used faith to do it. One of the things that Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, you're right. And your faith, your faith in your vision, your faith in God, your faith in your ability actually bans reality into your favor. Who would think that someone had the power to say, son, stand still? And it, it happened, Joshua bent reality, and so can you. Number three, you've got to live a life of gratitude. And I could stay here all day, all night talking about gratitude. And it's the attitude of gratitude. One of the things I want to encourage you to, to do, keep a, a gratitude journal just for the year. A whole lot of things will happen to you. But gratitude actually magnetizes the mind and causes great things to come your way. So at the end of the day, I want you to intentionally begin to thank God for at least three things that um, you did, he did, or even if you don't have a whole bunch of successes to be grateful for, just think about yourself physically. Can you walk? Can you talk? Can you hear? There are people, some people that will go to bed tonight and wake up with no sight tomorrow. They'll go to bed tonight and wake up with no hearing, or they'll go to bed tonight and wake up with loss. But if you wake up in the morning and you have eyesight and you have, you have hearing, 
Find three days every single day to be grateful for, to be grateful for physically, grateful for professionally, grateful for relationally, grateful for spiritually, grateful for globally, and do it intentionally. Number four, you've got to be able to learn the art of monetizing everything, and you've got to do it intentionally. Um, Ecclesiastes 5 and 9 says, moreover, the profit of the earth is for all. The king himself is served by the field. So this is important for you to understand that profit, success, prosperity is not just for some, is for all of us. So I want you to intentionally, every single day, think about how you are going to monetize everything. So what can you monetize? You can monetize your brand, such as Bill, Bill Gates. Um, his net, net, worth is, net worth is over $70 billion. Oprah Winfrey. You can um, monetize your time like lawyers and attorneys. You can monetize your name like Louis Vuitton, Coco Chanel, Michael uh, Jackson, Sean Combs, Combs uh, Stephen Jobs, EJ. Monetize your name. You can monetize your reputation like Oprah, um, Oprah's leaders. And you can borrow from someone's reputation or you can monetize your own. You can monetize your thoughts, your imagination. Like authors do that. J.K. Rollins, her net worth is $650 million or billion dollars. Or she's somewhere in the billions. Um, and don't quote me with it, but she's way up there. Um, you can monetize your imagination, Walt Disney. You can monetize your network, Mark Zuckerberg. You can monetize your experience like consultants, Warren Buffett's. His personal worth, net worth is over, what, $80, $80 billion? You could monetize your voice like Beyonce. You can monetize your looks, Gigi Haddad, who makes 150, 154, $154 million a year. And this is just monetizing her looks. You can monetize your legs. We know Tina Turner did that. You can monetize your assets, Kim Kardashian. You can monetize your education. Um, that's Lee, Lee Kuan Yew. He deceased, but he was the first president of, of Singapore. You can monetize your skill. I'm thinking of Venus and Serena. They play tennis. I'm thinking of Tiger Woods with golf, Luciano Pavarotti. He couldn't read music but he could sing. Fred Astaire could dance. Famous Amos could bake. Colonel Saunders fried chicken. Monetize your skill. It does not matter where you start. Just start. Elton John began, began his career with Patti LaBelle. He was, his, he was the pianist. So it doesn't where you start, matter where you start. You just got to think about how am I going to monetize everything? You can even monetize rejection. And I think of so many people that were rejected. I even think of Liberia that was started by um, a rejected slaves that were freed from the United States of America and the government gave them $100,000. And today we have Liberia, which is a sovereign nation. What can you do with $100,000? If you can start a nation, a whole country with $100,000 and free slave, you're free. What can you do with $10, $100, $1,000? Think about it. Then the next one, number five, what I want you to do is intentionally sharpen your sense about what you have the power to create. And all of us have the power to create wealth. How do we know? Because God said it. Deuteronomy 8, 17 to 18. And thou say in thy heart, my power and my might of my hand had gotten me this wealth. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant. So his covenant, a part of his covenant includes wealth, and he wants to establish that in your life. Number six, show up unapologetically you. And I want to remind you that if anyone asks who you are, I want you to give them the answer based on the revelation that God gave to me about me. And this is what God said to me. He said, you are the highest expression of my intelligence and genius given to humanity as a gift. And so now you have to just align your mind and align your spirit and align your actions accordingly. 
show up unapologetically you, your gift to humanity, and you're God's, one of God's highest expression of genius and intelligence. Number seven, you've got to learn the art of asking the right question. You gotta take the attitude of a, st of a student. Never be too big to ask questions. The scripture says, Matthew 18, four, whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same as the greatest in the kingdom. And one of the things that children do, they ask a lot of questions. It was Matthew 7, 78 that says, seven to eight that says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. That is important. Ask the right questions. If you're not getting the right answers, don't curse the answers, change your questions. Number eight, you've got to get rid of non-productive, self-sabotaging, destiny, destiny altering habits. So you've got to do that intentionally. Augmentino said, only a habit can sub subdue another habit. So I've discovered that if you intentionally transform bad, ineffective habits for good ones, then you will have exchange a bad life for a good life. And it all starts with habits, habits, what you do habitually. So change it out. Change out your bad habits for good habits and do it intentionally. If you drink a lot of soda, then drink a lot of water. If you sit on the couch all day and you're getting flabby and overweight, get up and exercise. So change your bad habits for good habits. Number nine, be consistent. And I want you to write this down. Intent intentionality has a twin name, consistency. Intentionality helps you to start. Consistency helps you to finish. So there is so many people that start well, but don't finish. I want you to start well and end well. I want you to finish strong. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He started intentionality, but through consistency over the entire, your entire lifespan, he's working with you so that you can end strong. He's going to finish strong. And so again, intentionality helps you to start. Consistency helps you to finish. First Corinthians 9, 24 to 27. Know ye not, they that which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize. So run that you may obtain. And every man that striveth for mastery is tempered in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible, a corruptible crown, but we an incorruptible. I therefore so run, not, not as uncertainly, so I fight, not as, as one that beateth the ear, but I consistently keep my body under subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself become a castaway. Second Timothy 4, 7 to 8, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth had laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at, the, at that day. Not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearance. And then number 10, which makes up the whole 30 that I promised you, think intentionally. For as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to this teaching on the Cindy Trim YouTube channel. All of our activities at Cindy Trim Ministries are supported by our partners, sponsors, and contributors. If this ministry has impacted you and you'd like to become one of our partners, our sponsors, or supporters, please click the link in the description below. To give now. Also, please take a second to click the subscribe button. That way you won't miss a single life-changing video. And if you have subscribed, make sure you share. Thanks again for watching. And as always, it's a pleasure and an honor to do life with you in real time. The Cindy Trim Ministries app just got even better. Dive into the brand new experience right now 
by updating or downloading the latest version of the app for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. The dynamic home screen keeps you up to date with the latest empowering articles, sermons, live streaming services, and a weekly arrangement of the most inspiring content available anywhere. Watch on-demand messages and begin leading your empowered life group today. Sign up now and receive your how-to handbook and discussion guides for each message. There's more empowerment at every click. Engage in the latest events hosted by Dr. Trim and find out when she's coming to a city near you. We've even made giving easier than ever before. You can donate now by selecting the Give button inside of the app. After creating your profile, giving will be as simple as putting in an amount and selecting Donate. Download the Cindy Trim Ministries app now and begin your journey of empowerment with us today.